and now we're ready to go. So let's introduce our first team. That first team is Urban Tees. Urban Tees is a t-shirt company with a philanthropic beat. Let's give them a round of applause. My name is Jimmy Fields, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Urban Tees. Urban Tees is a t-shirt company that wants to provide locally, well-designed, and comfortable t-shirts with a purpose. And our purpose is simple. With every purchase of a t-shirt, or our purpose is simple. We want to give back to our community. With every purchase of a t-shirt, 10 10% of our profits and 2% of our proceeds go to local environmental charities in the Austin area. And this idea, this idea was because that we want to give back to our community really badly. One of the ways that we want to give back is, I'm so sorry, um, we want to give back to our community. One of the places we want to give back to is Bastrop, Texas. And as many of you know, Bastrop, Texas was devastated by extreme fires that devastated the community. So now when you're making that drive that was much beautiful, you look to your left, you look to your right, and you see devastation. You see burnt trees, you see dead trees. And when you take a deep breath, you can still smell that smoke and that fire residue. And Urban Tees was heartbroken by that. So we want to give back. And it's our hope that when you buy an Urban Tea, not only are you getting a soft, comfortable t-shirt that makes you feel good, a well-designed t-shirt that makes you look good, but you're getting a t-shirt that enables you to know that your money is going to a great place and a great cause. It's our hope tonight that you'd invest in helping your community grow with Urban Teas. Hi, my name is Claire Jackson, and I'm the Director of Public Relations. The two problems that we're trying to solve is that we, we want to help people have an easier way to give back to their community and help keep their environment clean, as well as providing people with soft and comfortable t-shirts. The solutions to those problems are that we are going to give people an easier way to get back to the community by donating 10% of profits and 2% of proceeds to local environmental causes, as well as making these soft and comfortable t-shirts. And our customer segments are ages 15 to 35, so young adults, people who are Austinites, charitable people, trendsetters, and environmentalists. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lynn, and I'm Urban Tea's Chief Financial Officer. So for our total addressable market, everyone can wear a t-shirt. That is why our TAM is 7.5 billion people. However, we don't want to start out that big, so <laughs> we want to target people's ages 18 to 35 in the Austin area, which is about 2,300 people, which results to a revenue of $5,750,000. Uh, As for our cost structure, we are a traditional business, meaning that we sell t-shirts for profit. We also plan on giving, as Claire said, 10% of profits and 2% of proceeds back to local Austin charities. As for how we determine our $25 price point, it's cost plus pricing. So about 50% of our money will go towards producing and making the shirts, and about 25%, uh, 25 not 25, sorry, $11 will go back to helping us grow the business. Hi, my name is Julie Lissy, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Urban Tees. Our customer segment is from ages 18 to 35. So we know from experience that the majority of these young adults use social media heavily. That is why we plan on taking advantage of social media and using it as our main marketing tactic. For example, Instagram. Going somewhere cool? Wear your shirt. Snap a pic. Tag us, hashtag, we'll repost you and give you a free shirt. And that is one of the examples we have of using social media. We will also use Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat to update our customers on everything that is Urban Tees. The second marketing tactic that we plan on implementing is the Urban Tees Seed Gardening Parties. Attached to each shirt is not only a tag, but a packet of seeds. We plan on hosting these seed garden parties once every two months. Here we will invite all of our customers, as well as the media, to come meet at a local Austin garden and bring their shirts, or wear their shirts and bring their seeds. We will be planting the, seed, the seeds into the earth and with your community wearing your shirts. Our UVP is the experience. Urban Tees is not just any old t-shirt that you buy, wear once, and throw in the back of your closet. When you purchase urban tea, an Urban Tee, you know that you're making the full circle. You're wearing a shirt that makes you feel cool because it looks cool. It makes you feel comfortable because it's soft. And it makes you feel good because you know you're giving back to your environment and helping your community. Our marketing costs, we plan to be about $6,600.
The reason that this number is so high is we plan on heavily using Instagram and Facebook ads for marketing, and that is really pricey. For our MVP, we had three different portions. The first component was the website. We purchased the website and customized it. Behind me are screenshots of what we did with our website. The second part of our MVP was material comparison. When we designed our company, we knew we wanted these shirts to be different. They, we wanted them to be both soft and environmentally friendly. That's why we ordered two different materials. We ordered a 100% organic shirt, and we ordered a 70% bamboo and 30% organ organic cotton. This is the bamboo. We decided to go with the bamboo because it's really soft and it's really good for the environment. And the third and final part of our MVP was the designs and results. We used a website called Fiverr to reach out to three different artists to receive designs back. The designs are as follow. Then we created a survey on SurveyMonkey Monkey, and sent it to 100 different users. There we asked which design they preferred. We also sent this survey to our different networks. And the designs were equally liked, but the first design took the lead. We also asked, how proud are you of Austin? We got great results of this, with the majority of them being over eight out of 10. And lastly, we asked, how willing are you to purchase an Urban Tea t-shirt? And we got almost about 60% say yes. And this was a really good result because we didn't have a maybe. It was yes or no. And considering the, more, the majority said yes, this was really exciting for us. Hi, I'm Emily Link, and I'm the Director of Development. Our gross profit margin is 53.8%, and this is without taking into consideration bulk, so we expect that number to go up in the future. Our three-year net profit is as shown, with year one being around $50,000, and this is if we stayed in Austin only and didn't expand to other cities, as we plan to do in the future. Our COGS are around $11, and like I said earlier, we haven't taken into consideration bulk, so we expect that number to go down, with the largest portion of this being shipping. Our SG&A is around $12,000. Our largest portion of this is our marketing costs. Why we want to spend so much money on marketing is that we plan to expand to other cities. We want to start in Austin, go to the greater Texas area, the, wor uh, sorry, the US and the world as a whole. And all we would have to do for each city is we would change the t designs of the t-shirt so they'd be themed for the city they're in and they'll give back to local environmental charities in that city. Hi, my name is Jared Jacobson and I'm the director of sales. So how we get our t-shirts. First, you're gonna go on our website and pre-order our t-shirts. Why we wanna do this is it's gonna really keep our costs down for the first year until we get enough money to start buying in bulk. Um, next, what you're gonna see on all of our social media and all over the place is a shirt of the month. So this means a new shirt with a new design every single month. Now this does not mean that you can only buy this shirt, but this is the shirt that's gonna be at our $25 price. So that it's more incentive to go after the shirt of the month and go buy the shirt of the month. The rest of our shirts will be on our website to go buy. They will just be at a higher price. Next, for even more incentive to go after the shirts right away, we're gonna have tag numbers on the side of our shirts. So if Mr. Bybee goes on to our website June 1st and is the first one to buy our shirt, he will get a big old number one right on the side. <laughs> but if Jimmy goes on 10 minutes later, he might be the 150th buyer. So that's just even more incentive to go get our shirts. Um, next, I'm gonna hit back on our 10% of profits and 2% of proceeds. Why we do 2% of proceeds is because we really want our buyers to know and see a percentage of their money going straight to the charities off of the shirt they just bought. Um, and charities like Keep Awesome Beautiful and Tree Folks like Jimmy talked about. And most importantly are our seeds because other than giving back to the charities and the money going to the charities, this is you giving back to the earth yourself and you planting the seeds yourself. Well, good evening again. My name is Jimmy Fields. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Urban Tees. And as a t-shirt company, our startup costs in the first year are very straightforward, as most of it will be getting the t-shirts, getting an inventory going so that we can finally go and sell in the first year with about 5,000 for our starting inventory. 
but our total costs end up being around $10,000 for our startup costs, so we are gonna formally be asking investors for $10,075 to help our startup costs in the first year. As far as an exit strategy goes for Urban Tees, we're hoping to sell to another company or person uh, by year three, because by year three, that would um, give us the opportunity to know if we've had the impact that we've wanted to have as far as helping our community grow, as well as if we're having an offer by year three, then we'll know that we have been able to sell our t-shirts and been viable. As far as the future goes for Urban Tees, five of us are current seniors here at Westlake High School and we'll be heading to college next year with myself, Julie Lissy, and Emily Link heading to Texas A&M University. <laughs> Whoop. Um, Jared Jacobson will be going to the University of Missouri. Claire Jackson will be going to the University of Oklahoma. And our very own CFO, Rebecca Lynn, will be staying here at Westlake to take the accelerator course to continue to work on Urban Tees with our help. So I hope that you'll invest in helping your community grow with Urban Tees. Thank you. So that was a great job. Now we're going to turn it over to our judges for a few minutes of questions. That was an outstanding presentation. Very good. Uh, my first question is with five of you going off to college, one of you uh, being a senior next year, and total costs, I think, were about $10,000 for your SG&A costs. Uh, are you going to pay yourself? Honestly, right now, we're more concerned about getting this off the ground. Our priority here is to the community, not towards ourselves. So we plan on um, maybe, if we need it at the time, a little bit of financial assistance with like college fees and stuff. But honestly, <laughs> <laughs> what? College is expensive. <laughs> yeah. um, but we don't plan on paying ourselves very much at all. Could you um, just explain to me, so your cost of goods you said was $11, you're selling the, the shirt for $25, correct? And then 10% of Prof net profits, profits, yes. 2% of proceeds, which then the rest gets invested back into the business mm -hmm. for yes. operating costs? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, okay. yes ma'am. Was there a way that you arrived at that, that, those particular numbers? Um, one of the ways we arrived to 10% was we've seen other companies do way more or way less. So in way more just didn't seem viable for us. So we really wanted to keep our company growing constantly. And then the 2%, like I talked about, was really for the buyers themselves to see their money going straight to the charity. I really love the spirit of this deal, by the way. I, I <laughs> congratulate you on that. My question is around the selling cost, and Jared, I think you're, you're responsible for sales. There was, there was one slide where you had sales cost, and then I didn't see that um, item again at the very end on, on one of the, uh, the slides, but can you unpack a little bit more for me what goes into that number on the sales side? Because, I mean, it's wonderful to have social media getting the word out there, but obviously you know, it's very hard to get things off the ground and try to get those first few sales. Right. Um, so with our $25, where is how much our shirt's going to cost. Um, with all of our marketing and doing that and getting the shirt for the shirt of the month, um, I think it's a big deal for us. And that's really going to be the incentive to go after the $25 one. Um, and it costs 11 Yeah, around $11. Around $11. Well, um, I guess my, my question is geared more toward how do you actually acquire the customer's interest to start with? So you, um, you know, you're, you're bringing them in through social media, right. I'm assuming, and then what are the costs that really apply to bringing them toward the close? I, I don't think I'm getting your question. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> well, so you, you, you must have an e-commerce engine on your website. Okay. Are you personally going to be involved also out there with direct selling? Or oh, what? of course, yeah. We're going to, so at these different things, we're going to have pop-up stands, selling them all around, um, giving a bunch away um, so people can just start wearing them and start getting our logo out there and our brand out there um, so people can start seeing our, what we are and who we are. So that's, I mean, how we start getting it out, I guess. Okay. So <clears throat> as an investor, um, you know, a big part of what we back as investors is the team, right? And so you guys did a great job. You're clearly a good team. But how do I get comfortable as an investor that 
um, with five sixths of the team here that impressed me so much leaving that uh, that this is is something that I should be excited about investing in. I think the biggest reason is that a we're all so excited about this company. Even going off to college, we've had Urban Tees in mind, especially for this night right here. And I think just the past two weeks have been a testament to how we've worked well as a team because. As seniors, we've been so busy going, juggling all these things while trying to prepare for this pitch night. And we've been FaceTiming each other and we've been calling each other, we've been texting each other, we've been doing all these things to stay in touch about how we're going to work well for this pitch night. And I think that's something we'll be doing with three of us are going to be in one city so we can be in one place at one time, FaceTiming into meetings or we're two hours away to come. But for the people that are farther away like Jared or Claire, they're perfectly willing um, to FaceTime in and just be a part of the company because we're all just so excited about it. And I think another thing that we were considering doing next year with the Accelerator course is for Rebecca to take the lead here in Westlake and Austin, our home base, but to hire some more students in the Accelerator course to help us out and for us to still be here and support. So to answer your question, um, I think we will be just fine in that. We are super excited about this company, and I think that that's what investors should know about us. Yeah, okay, thank you. You're going to be busy, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to all of you for, for getting this far. Great job. Thank, um, thank you. I was just curious, in some of the research you did to prepare, did you find any other companies who have a similar concept to you who are maybe doing the same thing? And then on that same note, what do you think the biggest barriers to entry might be for competitors in entering this space, maybe wanting to compete against you in the future? Um, we did do some research. Um, what a similar... We found several t-shirt companies that did donate to charities, but the reason that we're so different is we have a very specific cause that we're um, interested in, and that is environmental. And so we're different because our shirts are, are environmentally friendly as well as we're giving back. And so that's what stands out. That's what makes our company stand out from the others. For example, Life is Good, they donate 10% of their proceeds to MS research. And so we're different because we, instead of a t-shirt and then our money going to a, a company, we're very connected the full way, if that makes sense. Could you repeat your second question, please? <laughs> I think you, you had a great answer. You answered most of what I was looking for. It was the concept of barriers to entry into this market. Um, what kind of obstacles do you think other competitors might have to overcome in order to compete against you in the future? Is this an easy market for companies to enter? Or do you think there are a lot of barriers to entry which might protect your position? I think that we'll be pretty protected because we put a lot of thought into tying everything together. So rather than, like I had mentioned earlier, rather than just having our shirts um, be like any old t-shirt and then donating to a cause, we really thought about how we could tie everything together within every aspect, so within our sales, our design, the product itself um, included. All right, any other questions from the judges? Fantastic, let's give a big round of applause for Urban Tees. Thank you, Thank you very much. Any, anyone who knows me well knows that Capital Factory orders about 20,000 t-shirts a year. So we will definitely be up for putting an order through you guys soon. Good job. All right, well, now it is time to reveal the winner of the wild card. So we've got a whole bunch of students waiting here in anticipation. They've been out, they were out there pitching all of you as you walked by and encouraging you to text. I'm sure that none of you had all kinds of other people illegally texting in votes from other places. But uh, I believe we have an envelope here to reveal the winner. Thank you so much. The envelope, please. All right, and the wild card winner the fifth, well, the fourth, but the fifth presenter is Your Stop. So Your Stop, if you guys could get together and come back to the green room, 
you can start preparing for your pitch. Everyone else has had a little bit more notice, and they are going to now have just two more pitches to get ready, and then they'll be the fourth one coming and presenting. So congratulations to your stop. <laughs>